Bill Maher, big lib, came out and uh, admitted what the Democrats have denied for a long time, most of them, and what the conservatives have been, been pointing out, which is that abortion is, in fact, murder. The idea that you're fighting an election around this issue um, seems to be, you know, just strange. Back to the 19th century. Well, not, not if you believe it's murder. You know, that's why I don't understand the 15-week thing. Or the Trump's plan is, let's leave it to the states. You mean, so killing babies is okay in some states? Like, I can respect the, the absolutist position. I really can. I, I, I scold the left on when they say, oh, you know what? They just hate women, people who aren't pro-life, they, uh, pro-choice. They just, they don't hate women. They just made that up. They think it's murder. And it kind of is. I'm just okay with that. I am. I, I mean, there's 8 billion people in the world. I'm sorry, we won't miss you. That's my position on that. Two cheers for Bill Maher. Not three cheers because what he's saying is evil, but two cheers because what he's saying is honest. And it's a lot more honest than what the Democrats are saying. And he, his views are actually charitable toward, toward the Republicans. He's saying, yeah, look, if you, if you think it's murder and you, and you think murder is always bad, uh, then, yeah, it's not, your, your pro-life support is not motivated by misogyny. It's motivated by your care not to murder innocent people. By the way, you're right that it's murder. I'm just okay with that. We have overpopulation. I remember these views. I, I held these views when I was when I was pro-choice. I made the same arguments Bill Maher did. I I did not think it was murder. I don't, I wouldn't have said it was tantamount to murder. He's going a little further, but he's just being clearer than I was when I was a sixteen-year-old idiot. He's he's articulating the Naomi Wolf argument from the mid '90s, which was that uh, uh, abortion should be legal. I'm all for abortion, but we need to recognize that a woman in an abortion is killing the baby in all of its humanity. That was Naomi. Now, she may have changed her position since then. She's become more right-wing since then. But, but that's what Bill Maher is saying here. And this is the practical problem for the, the conservatives and the Republicans running on this. Hey, I'm personally pro-life, but I want people to just have choices. And please, please don't not vote for me because I support not killing babies or whatever. Any position other than the principled one, which is that it's wrong to murder innocent people, is going to make you look like a liar. And it's going to make you look really, really cynical. And it's going to undermine your whole argument. That's why the libs are trying to get us to undermine our argument. They want us to embrace the surrogacy industry, for instance. You know, IVF, where you create a bunch of babies, and then, in practically speaking, most of them, you either throw in a freezer forever, or you just kill them through abortion. They really want to make Republicans, in principle, adopt support for IVF and surrogacy because they know that it undermines our argument on pro-life because it means that we don't really believe that life begins at conception, which by definition it does. <laughs> it's because of conception, it's the beginning. This is the, the practical argument, the practical problem with trying to squish on this issue. If conservatives don't want to have to run on abortion as the big issue in 2024, good. That's smart. That's prudent. And we need to be wise as serpents and innocent as doves. Okay. And we can have all sorts of language and all sorts of legitimate policies about supporting women, giving them a lot of resources, giving people, giving young families resources, encouraging marriage. We can, we can do all that stuff. That's great. And you can downplay the issue of, of abortion in a campaign. But if, you, if, you're, <laughs> if you're going to flip on your support for the fundamental right, without which none of the other rights can exist, on which all of the other rights rely, then you have just undercut your entire position in public life. What is the if we're not even going to defend the basic right, then what's the point of political participation? Then we stand for nothing. Right now, go to hallow.com slash Knowles. Whether you're feeling stressed or anxious or simply seeking a moment of peace and tranquility, the Hallow app has something for you. Hallow offers an incredible range of guided meditations and prayers that are designed to help you deepen your spirituality and strengthen your connection to God. With Hallow, you can embark on a journey of exploration, diving into different themes and types of prayer and meditation. From gratitude to forgiveness, each session offers a unique experience, sparking your curiosity and deepening your spiritual understanding. 
Choose different lengths of meditation to fit your schedule, whether you have a few minutes or an hour. With its user-friendly interface and hundreds of guided meditations, the Hallow app has quickly become a go-to resource for people seeking spiritual growth and healing. You can download the app for free at hallow.com slash Knowles, K-N-W-L-E-S. Set prayer reminders and track your progress along the way. Hallow is truly transformative and will help you connect with your faith on a deeper level. So what are you waiting for? Download the Hallow app today at hallow.com slash Knowles, K-N-W-L-E-S. That is hallow.com slash Knowles for an exclusive three-month free trial of all 6,000 plus prayers and meditations. Speaking of changing views on abortion, According to Pew Research, six in 10 Catholics support legal abortion. This is really shocking because the Catholic Church has always been against abortion. From the very beginning of the church, 2,000 years ago, the, the earliest documents we have from the church, the Didache, for goodness sakes, the, the original kind of catechism of the church, going back, what, 1,900 years or so, 1,800, 1,900 years, opposes abortion. This is as consistent of you in practical politics, as can be held by the Catholic Church. And now most American Catholics support abortion? What? What does that mean? Well, by definition, it is not possible for faithful practicing Catholics to support abortion. It's not, it is not possible. If you support abortion, you are not a faithful practicing Catholic. You're, you're, you could be a baptized Catholic, you, but you... You cannot be a faithful practicing Catholic if you do that. It's not even like saying, you know, uh, to be Catholic, you have to be perfect all the time and you can never sin. We're not talking about, you know, a, a failure of continence. You know, you, you, uh, you glutted yourself. You, you, you said a naughty word. You, I don't know, you did drugs. You looked at porn. You got drunk, you, whatever. Those would be uh, sins, certainly, and you should go and confess your sins and receive absolution. But in this case, what we're talking about is something much more conscious and much more doctrinal. You're saying, I do not assent to the teachings of the church, and I will con continue, I will persist in defiance of the church, of the 2,000-year magisterial teaching of the church on this issue. This is not a negotiable issue. You know, Pope Benedict XVI uh, opposed the death penalty, and he said, look, Catholics can disagree on this. For virtually all of the church's history, the church has defended in principle the death penalty. In fact, popes, including beatified popes, carried it out. Okay, blessed Pius IX carried out 500 executions in the papal states, all right? So there you might say, okay, there might be some disagreement. Not so on abortion. So what does this mean? What it means in practice is not that the Catholic Church is changing its teaching on abortion. It cannot do that. What it means is Catholics are giving up their collective political power. Catholics, by, by, breaking, with the, by breaking ranks and by breaking with the teaching of their church, they're just giving up their, their political power. And so it doesn't, you don't need to win the Catholic vote anymore if this is the case, because the Catholic vote doesn't mean anything. Because these Catholics, when it comes down to it, a conflict between the God of the Catholic Church and the God of liberalism, they're going to choose the God of liberalism. Man, that was a good clip. And it was well articulated and it was hot and handsome. And if you want more of it, you got to ring the bell and subscribe. And we'll see you next time.